I'm with Mike Callahan, who's the Senior Director for Solutions Marketing at AWS Elemental. Hi, Mike. Hey. Now, you work with a whole bunch of pioneering customers who are deploying new services and experiences, and I know some of them use an HEVC. Mm -hmm. um, tell us about some of those projects. Okay, yeah, so for HEVC customers, we have a range that start with uh, 4K UHD customers, like BT, and then they, it transitions to, what we've seen more recently, anyway, is a transition to more HD and SD customers, uh, such as Molotov in, in France. Okay, and Molotov, that's a very interesting kind of aggregated OTT offer, isn't it? They've got pretty much all the pay and free channels together on there. Like very compelling service. So just tell us a bit more about that service. So there's a couple of interesting things with that service. And, and one is that they're, they're using HEVC to reduce the, the bandwidth and increase their, their customer base. They, they're using it to save cost and save, um, save delivery costs and save storage costs both. Okay, and that's all streaming for Molotov, but BT, BT is both broadcast and some of it goes yes. streaming with YouTube. Yes. Um, I mean, what are the challenges with BT that you've run up against? Or? So BT was one of the first, first customers for us doing, doing HEVC and, what's, and, and, for, and 4K as well. And the interesting thing about that application is that they have not, they have not stopped. So after they launched their first one, uh, or first service, they've started expanding upon it. So they've, they've rolled out uh, Dolby Atmos to improve the, the surround sound. So it feels like while you're in your living room, you, you, you feel like you're in the Coliseum, you feel like you're in the arena. And they've, they've continued to expand that farther by doing proof of concepts around, around HDR, such as Dolby Vision. Okay, and that sort of plays into the, the fact that, you know, immersive video is more than just HEVC and it's more than UHD. It's very much a, you know, next-gen audio as well. Yep, absolutely. So we see we see a lot of um, a lot of traction uh, that's coming in the market, especially in sports around next generation audio, with Dolby Atmos being one of the one of the leading uh, the leading pieces of that, uh, and which is something that our encoders have been uh, expanded to include as well. Yeah, I mean that was my next question. How does that affect the encoding process? Does it change the workflow at all? Does it add any complexity? From the encoding side, there are some, some new things that we've had to add on the metadata side. A lot of the, the heavy lifting is around outfitting the stadiums for uh, the additional microphones, outfitting the control rooms to, to be able to adjust the sound exactly as you want. And most, most of what our responsibility is, is to take that metadata and push, push it all the way through to the end user. Okay, now in terms of the streaming services, we've been hearing a lot about CMAF. I mean, what kind of impact is that having on the market? Apple's announcement of support for HEVC is, I think, a, a huge changer, and that comes back to the Molotov work workflow, um, where they allow you to use any device uh, as part of their service. So you can start on one device and then pick up on another and, and continue it. So streaming formats right now are a little bit challenging. There's multiple formats that aren't all compatible with each other. CMAF is the next path towards simplifying the workflow so that there's one encode uh, which can then be picked up and used in different ways. The main challenge with uh, CMAF is that what we have for MPEG Dash and what we have on the Apple spec are slightly different. So things like the captions and the encryption are, are not exactly the same. So the file format might be very close, but the things that go along with it to actually make a service for a user are, are different. And so what that means for us is that we have been continuing to promote our just-in-time packaging solutions, which allows you to do a single encode and then deliver to these two multiple types of devices and streaming formats. Okay, and is there anything else that's really challenging your customers now when you talk to them? The, this, the, for us, it's always the, the standards challenge of this one is not quite the same as this one. And we see that with not only CMAF and the things that are happening with between MPEG Dash and the Apple specs, but with also with the uh, HDR specifications. So there's three, four, five HDR specifications. And one of the things that we've been able to help customers with is supporting a broad set of them. Basically, through our uh, software-based solution, we're able to pick up um, the new standards as they become popular with, with customers and add those into the existing software. And what technology excites you now when you look around in terms of its potential to drive sort of customer opportunities mm -hmm. or new viewing experiences? Yeah, so there's, there's three that are really exciting for us. One is cloud, uh, one is HDR, and one is CMAF. So starting with cloud, being part of AWS, we're able to take advantage of all of the other AWS services that are available. 
And that opens up some, some new and interesting doors for our customers. So for example, uh, AWS has a service called Recognition. And Recognition allows you to take an image and scan that image and find interesting items in that image. So we, we may take a, a, an image of us and may say man, man, glasses. It can really identify like, things like suits, what you're wearing. And wh where we see that as a benefit for our customers is that we can help them take their existing archives, feed their archives through these types of image analysis tools, and build up custom metadata uh, for their archives. And that, that really is potentially a game changer. Uh, in our previous demonstrations, we've shown the ability to do things like live clipping. So you can say, oh, automatically give me clips that have men in them or that have bicycles or that have cars. And so um, the, the, the actual application might be find all of my archive that has Michael Jackson in it and pull all those clips up so the editors can have them you know, right at hand. Um, another one is HDR. So HDR for us uh, is really about helping the consumer get a much better experience. We see our customers wanting to promote HDR to help them keep customers, to, to improve their retention, uh, and to, to really have customers get, get a great experience uh, from, from watching their content. Um, HDR is a little bit challenging because there are three, four, five formats that are, that are existing out there. As, as a software-based provider, one of the things that we're able to do is give customers the ability to switch between different, different types of formats or convert between the different formats um, and change that over time depending on what becomes most popular in the market. So it, it allows us to be very agile and that helps, helps our customers buy one type of solution and then continue to expand it through just simply through software. And then the third piece that uh, is, is pretty interesting and exciting is the evolution of CMAF. So CMAF is a, is a media format which is intended today to provide convergence between multiple different formats. So uh, the way that it's been uh, brought out most recently is through Apple's announcement. So Apple announced that they will support a, a portion of CMAF and combining that with the MPEG dash and the dash work that's already existed helps to, to converge these two worlds together. The, the big challenge that we see there is again a little bit of a, a format difference. So Apple has a very specific set of requirements for captions and encryption that are different from what MPEG dash or what dash would normally support. So the way that we've been helping customers in that case is through just-in-time packaging. So we can deliver the same video content to a just-in-time packager, and the just-in-time packager can create the correct captions, correct encryption, depending on which type of device is actually making the request. Right, okay. That's uh, fabulous stuff. So uh, thanks very much for telling us about that. Oh, thank you.